to show you the procedure on how to do a pressure test, or it's sometimes called a leak down test, on your Polaris two-stroke engine. Now we're using a Polaris 250 for our example here, but the same procedure applies to all the Polaris two-strokes. Also, we have this one out on the bench. You don't necessarily need to remove it from your ATV. You do need to remove the carburetor and the exhaust header, however, so that you can put a cover plate here and a plug here in order to uh, perform the pressure test. So let's uh, look at some of the tools that you'll need in order to do this test. Okay, to perform the pressure test you really need two things. You need something to plug the carburetor boot and something to plug the exhaust so that you can get a tight seal. So, on the exhaust side, the best thing I've found is to just get a uh, flat steel plate. This is about four inches wide, about three inches wide. Drill holes about two and three quarter inches apart. Then stop by a hardware store and get a large rubber washer. The wa rubber washer will be used to seal up against the exhaust. Next, go down to O'Reilly's or AutoZone and get a valve stem that threads on and then some RTV sealant and then at Lowe's or Home Depot get one of these PVC caps and drill a hole in it so that you can use it as a plug. You may have to modify it slightly. As you can see here I've had to kind of grind this off a little bit so that it fits within the boot. The other thing you'll need is a tire pump to put some pressure into the engine so you can measure it and a low pressure tire gauge you can pick these up in any of the parts stores as well these are used for measuring the, the air in an ATV tire because you only go up to maybe 5-10 pounds max and that's all we'll be using so let's go ahead and step through the procedure So let's go ahead and close off the exhaust port. If you have something that's a little sticky, like dielectric grease, maybe a little bit of RTV sealant, it kind of helps if you just put a little dab on each side here. This is just to make the uh, rubber gasket kind of stick there until you get the plate bolted on. Use the, uh, the nuts that hold the exhaust header on. Tighten those up. It needs to be snug. The rubber gasket will do most of the sealing. About like that. Next we want to seal up the carburetor boot. Now you do want to leave the carburetor boot on here because you want to check, make sure you're not getting any air leaks around the boot itself. Plus you need some method for putting air in once we seal it up so this plug uh, seems to work pretty good. So insert the plug, take your clamp, tighten the clamp down to hold the plug nice and snug. And at this point your crankcase and your piston should be sealed up, ready for the test. So now we put about six to eight pounds of pressure inside the engine. You just take your tire pump, usually a couple of pumps will do it just fine. Use your tire gauge to measure the pressure, make sure you're correct. Now here, I listen and you hear some noise. You use simple green to spray the engine around the crank shaft seals, around the cylinder jug, and around the head gasket, and you look for leaks. It'll typically start bubbling. Now in this case, 
I can see some bubbling going on here around the carburetor boot. So that needs to be fixed before we can continue on, confirm that uh, all the other parts of the engine are sealed. So I've resealed the carburetor boot to take care of the leak that we found. Now we go ahead and resume our test. Again, 68 pounds, usually a couple pumps or so on the uh, tire pump. You check, make sure you've got the right uh, amount of PSI in it. And then again, you spray with simple green around the engine and check for any potential air leaks. Now you might get an air leak here around the seal on the exhaust. If so, just tighten it up a little bit. But you watch, give it about five, 10 minutes, check your pressure periodically, and if it stays fairly steady, might lose a pound or two over five, 10 minutes, then you know your engine is sealed. If not, then you need to be looking around for some bubbles coming uh, around the cylinder jug, possibly maybe around the uh, head gasket, but typically I find the leaks around here or your crankshaft seals. If that's the case, you'll need to replace the seal. Once uh, your engine is able to hold air for five to ten minutes, then it's ready to put back in your ATV.